Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be showing you how to expand the storage on your TP-Link TLWR902 AC router running OpenWRT using a USB drive, and also how to set up an FTP server. We're going to take it step by step, so let's dive in. The first challenge with this router is that it only has 8 megabyte of flash memory, and after installation you're left with just about 2 MB of usable space. And let me tell you, without creating a custom OpenWRT build, you won't be able to install the software needed to expand storage. Trust me, I've been there. The disk will get full before you can even start. To fix this, I made my own custom OpenWRT build by trimming down unnecessary packages to the bare minimum for basic functionality. Here's the website. Click on Customize Install Packages and follow along. By the way, all the text commands, links, and resources I mention in this video are listed down below in the description, so feel free to check them out. Copy this modified list of packages and paste here. Then, click on Request Built. It may take you some time. I already did the process, so it straight away gave me the recovery and sysupgrade files. Download and follow next. Once my custom sysupgrade and recovery files are downloaded and ready, rename the recovery file to tp underscore recovery dot bin and copy it to the TFTP server's install path. Using a TFTP server for recovery mode. To do this, open the network settings on your PC, set a static IP address to 192.168.0.66, and configure the TFTP server as shown. Then, press reset button on the router using a SIM removal tool while turning it on. The router will automatically fetch the tp underscore recovery dot bin file from the TFTP server, install and reboot itself. Don't forget to set your network back to obtain IP automatically after the recovery process. Now we wait. As this is a resetted router, we need to set password again for the SSH access we need to take next. Also, we need to configure our router as client so that it can download the required files and install them. After everything is configured, we check our connectivity. And yes, we are connected. Some things can only be configured using SSH. Here we are using Putty Client to log in. Enter password we just set initially and accept the pop-up. We are using the pre-installed VI editor. Type in VI, space USS.sh and enter. Press I to enter into input mode. 
copy the pre-made text as shown and right-click to paste. To save and exit, first press Escape key, followed by WQ. Now we give this file permission to execute. We type in chmod, plus x in file name with extension. Enter. With the fresh custom build installed, let's use a 8GB USB drive as storage. Now before we move ahead, first plug the USB drive into your Windows PC. Right-click the Windows icon at the bottom left and select Disk Management. Once you're in Disk Management, find your USB drive, delete all the existing partitions if any, and then simply eject the USB drive without making any new partitions. After that, plug the USB back into your router and follow along. Bash script is made to automate the partitioning and formatting the pen drive to set up extrude. What the script does is create two partitions, formats them as XT4, and copies the current root file system to the 2GB partition. Press Y as shown. 2. Confirm. Making of two EXT4 partitions. After running the script, it reboots the router. To verify, let's log in in the web interface. And see if the EXT route was successfully mounted. And yes, it did, with almost two gigabytes of extra storage. To check out our other 5GB partition, we head to System, Mount Points, and then Generate Config. Here we can see our partition, all set for the next steps. Setting up the FTP server with VSFTPD. Here we'll start by editing our router's password file. In here, there's a default user, FTP, which has been given every permissions we need. But his wrong file path. We need to edit it as follows. After this, we save and exit. Next up, I set up the 5 gigabytes partition as an FTP server using VSFTPD. Since this is a low-powered router, I chose this software package as it's lightweight. Next, we will create a new directory named FTP underscore share where we will mount our 5 gigabytes partition. To verify, just type DF space minus H. Again, we will make another folder under FTP underscore share as storage for all our FTP transactions.
Next, we will configure this FTP server. In brief, this config enables anonymous access, so anyone can upload files without needing a username or password. I chose this configuration because the router is a low-powered device, and I wanted to simplify the process as much as possible, keeping it straightforward without adding unnecessary complexity. Of course, there are many ways to authenticate users before joining the FTP server, like creating individual users, assigning different permissions, or keeping it anonymous while restricting access through the firewall by allowing only specific MAC addresses. We might explore those options in a future videos. As you can see, our FTP underscore share folder is set with root access only, with no permissions for group or others. Why? Because the VS FTP D software restricts anonymous users from accessing the mount point folder directly. This is due to a feature called CH root access, which limits their permissions. We've intentionally given them no access to this folder. However, the storage folder inside has 777 permissions, meaning everyone can read, write, and execute files or folders within it. This setup is perfect for our scenario, as it allows full access where it's needed while keeping the root directory secure. After setting up file permissions to both the folders, let's reload and restart the FTP service. We also need to enable the service so this server starts every boot. To connect to this server, we need FTP client. I chose FileZilla. Here's the website and location to download the software from. Install and open FileZilla. Enter the router's IP address. Leave the username and password fields blank and click on Quick Connect. Wow, the FTP server works. To test, let's upload and delete files right away. I chose some PDFs as test documents. And what you know, everything seems to work just fine. After rebooting the router, I noticed that the 5 GB partition didn't auto-mount. To fix this, I went back to the OpenWRT web interface, enabled auto-mount for the partition in mount points. And applied these changes. On the next reboot, both the 2GB extrude and 5GB FTP partition mounted correctly, and everything was good to go. And that's it. We've successfully expanded the storage on the TP-Link TLWR902AC router and set up an FTP server. Remember, all the text commands, websites, and other resources are down in the description below. Since this was a fresh install, I don't have an ad blocker or 5 GHz Wi-Fi set up yet. You can check out my other videos on how to install those on my YouTube channel. Now, with the expanded storage, running out of space won't be an issue anymore, and you can install as many packages as you need. But keep in mind, this is a low-powered device with a single-core CPU, so don't overload it, or it might slow down or even break the device. If you followed along, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or any video suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.